It's Jana with another installment of Stay Inspired. Um, today is like a extension of last week because uh, we are giving tips on, on wedding photography, how to shoot weddings. Um, last week, if you missed it, then you can go back and look. We talked about the equipment that um, I carry to weddings and we talked about the beginning of the wedding all the way up to the ceremony. And today I'm gonna start um, talking to you about uh, what I do at the ceremony and um, My goal is to get a really awesome wide shot of a finished ceremony location before anyone sits down. So I gotta hightail it over there and make sure I'm getting like, you know, really good shots of the ceremony. See if there's any details, and there are usually lots of details. And um, another thing is if, if I see that the reverend or the whoever is gonna marry them is there, I'll take that time to go up and talk to him and I'll say, listen, how long is the ceremony? Is there anything I need to know? What are you gonna say right before they do the kiss? What are you gonna say right before they exchange rings? So that I can tell the ceremony with, you know, I can tell an, a beautiful story of the ceremony without having to focus on the bride and groom the entire time. If I, if I have some notes about when things are gonna happen, then I can feel confident enough to get like reaction shots from their parents, from their bridesmaids, groomsmen, and from the audience. After that, I'm gonna get set up. I'm gonna get it set up, set up and I'm gonna wait for um, the bride to start walking down the aisle. The groomsmen, of course, come in first. I'm gonna be standing back there with my 7200 on my main camera, and I'm gonna be ready for bridesmaids, groomsmen, um, and my bride to walk down the aisle. Um, like I said before, when I'm shooting the ceremony, um, I'm, you know, I'm gonna be all over the place. I'm gonna be getting wide shots. I'm gonna be using the 7200 to come in and get really close shots. But let me tell you something that, in my opinion, works really well. Okay, so um, when the bride and groom are giving, are making this promise to each other, they're, they're saying their vows, it's very emotional. Um, if I'm the bride and I'm talking to my groom and I'm telling him that I love him and like, you know, I've just written these vows for you and they're so beautiful and I'm so excited. You know what, my mouth is gonna be moving like this and he is just gonna be looking at me like dying. Hopefully he's crying, it's gonna be awesome. So who am I gonna be focused on while the bride is saying her vows? I'm gonna be focused on the groom because he's standing there like this. You know, he's like listening. His mouth isn't moving. It's awesome. Same thing when he's telling her everything he feels and dreams and hopes for their future. I'm gonna be focused on her. That's gonna make her cry. It's like the sweetest thing. She's looking at him like, oh. So that's a little tip I have for you too. Um, another thing I love to do is I want to make sure that I'm like in the middle of the aisle, like towards the end of the aisle when they're gonna kiss. Because I, I like to be on the 7200 when, and I can zoom up really close and, and then I can zoom out so I can get like a wide shot and an up close shot of their kiss, right? So I wanna be in position. I wanna know what's happening um, and be totally prepared and not have to like run or change lenses when she's walking down the aisle or anything crazy. You definitely have to just be aware. Keep your ears open like I said before. Keep your eyes open. You're super focused, right? Oh, this is something else. This, I, I love this. So um, one of my favorite parts of the day is um, like after they've gotten married and um, so right they've walked down the aisle and then here come all the brides and groomsmen and everything so probably at that time my second shooter has made her way to me her or his way over and so I'm gonna make sure we're gonna make eye contact and make sure like you're gonna take over right so she's gonna take over the groomsmen and the bridesmaids walking down the aisle the moms and dads the grandparents I'm gonna go spy on the bride and groom because it's awesome like right after they get married it's so cool how many people run up and like with with no, you know, whatever that word is, they don't hold back and they just give them hugs and they congratulate them and that is super fun to me. And I actually like to get up high and shoot it like below. What tends to happen is um, cocktail hour starts and as much as I wish that I could go to cocktail hour and take really cool pictures of people drinking and dressed cute and everything, usually I'm gonna be with the bride and groom taking family pictures and my second shooter is gonna be at cocktail hour. And that's super fun. You should really encourage your second shooter to like, just be creative with it, you know? So I've taken family shots now and um, we're gonna move on to the bride and groom pictures, which is super fun. Whether I've done a first look or not, I still wanna do bride and groom pictures because now they're married. You know what? When we did first look, they weren't married and now they are. So I think it's really cool 
and um, it's just, I don't know, it's magical. They're married now, you know, they just got married like five minutes ago. They'll always look at that, wow, that was right after we got married. So um, I love to, to use, you know, hopefully the light is falling, it's going down at that time, and you know, it's just, it's beautiful. Like I said before, I like to use the 51.2 normally um, on that, or I'll do like the 7200, it's also really beautiful. Um, after we've finished that, um, uh, normally like, you know, the bride and groom are gonna chill for a second, and then I'm gonna go get set up in the reception.